Otherwise, our next speaker is um, Valerie de Anda. Um, she comes from the University, the Autonomous University Mexico, and also University of Saragossa, where she's finishing um, her PhD on what the sea evolution biology work that we will see. So, great. I am very nervous, so this should work. Okay. So first of all, thank you very much. <laughs> no worries. Um, I just wanna, before I get started, I just wanna say how much I really appreciate all the Giga Science team for all the support, for the invitation, and obviously all the participants in the Giga Science question. Um, okay. So, I think, so, what I'm going to present you right now is my first chapter of my PhD thesis. And this is really exciting because it's also my first paper, so, um, okay. Here, yeah. okay. So, I think I don't have to talk to you about how over the last 15 years, high frequency sequencing technologies have completely revolutionized our understanding of microbial growth. So nowadays, you can just go there, sequence metagenomes, genomes, and get insight into the diversity, ecology, evolution, and functional makeup of the microbial growth, right? And furthermore, you can just reconstruct um, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, okay so you can have um, complete uh, genomes from <coughs> genomic samples and get inside into this microbial dark matter so the hard to culture microorganisms the microorganisms that you cannot culture in the lab right so Okay, we have all this information, and but there's always a bug. Um, happen. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm just going to. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So. Despite the huge amount of data that we have accumulated so far, our ability to evaluate complex metabolic, um, metabolic um, capabilities in this huge amount of data is really, really, really challenging, not only because of the large amount of data, it is biologically and computationally challenging. And I think I don't need to tell you about that because you already know that. And why in the case of metagenomics, it's really complex to infer biological um, hypotheses. And this is what I like to see, like the tip of the iceberg and the iceberg, meta, uh, the iceberg illusion of metagenomics. So currently, most of the microbial ecology studies um, we have seen from the talks from yesterday that, okay, we have this, imagine that we have this iceberg, we have this large amount of data, and we ask who is there, what are they doing? And if we focus on what are they doing, like their functions, we just focus, okay, the most abundant pathways, uh, a few molecular marker genes, and we, see, okay, this is the most statistical differential uh, uh, functions, and we have this information, but what about the rest? So we are not getting all the details of that information, right? So currently, the bottleneck is obviously the efficiency of data processing. So what do we need to improve this? What do we need to get all the information get like a full insight of this information. So we need to have a balance between, okay, I need to be able to interpret it, like have 
and test biological um, hypotheses to evaluate, compare, and analyze not just one sample, but large scale data set, like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of genomes and metagenomes, right? But this is also has to be with, okay, has to be computational efficiency, high performance, accuracy, high speed, high speed, sorry, and also it has to be reproducible. But, okay, so, mm -hmm. why is it not working? Something I'm doing is wrong. Can you just quit, I say, to just click better? Because I just get excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I, took, I took this concept of uh, this paper of data integration. So that's what we need, right? We need data integration. And the concept of data integration is for a given system, multiple sources and possible data types of data are available. And we want to study them in an integratively integrative way, okay? So imagine that our system is the metabolism. So we want to study the metabolism and we want to know what possible sources of data we have. So, okay, metabolism. We are not going to analyze the, all the metabolism. Imagine that you have a bacteria. We are not going to analyze all the metabolic pathways. We want to focus in one, not one pathway, but like a complex um, metabolic functions, okay? So, the question is, what are the available data that we have that we can use to characterize these metabolic machineries? So that's the question. And we know that we have um, these databases, right? Manually created databases, and we have large collection of public data. Okay, but how do we integrate all this information to understand the system? And the system is the metabolism. So here we propose to use this mathematical model, which is the relative entropy, to use all this information and then build a single score from this. So with, this, with using this single score, you can evaluate all this information of one specific metabolism in large scales on it, um, in thousands and hundreds of metagenomes and genomes. So the, the relative entropy is basically uh, the, the divergence between one probability distribution, like one expected uh, probability distribution and one observed. So if you have an H prime uh, value, which is relative entropy of one, that means that it's really informative. That means that this, um, in the case of the metabolism that we want to study, it's really informative, that we are catching that metabolism. Otherwise, if we have a value of zero, that indicates that it's the same, that you have the same distributions in both, um, yeah. So that's zero, the logarithm is zero. So, okay, does it really work? That, that, that's what, what we thought, okay? So this is like the idea, but then we want to, uh, to, to really test that. So this single value can capture an entire metabolic machinery, and can we use this single value to evaluate, compare, and analyze like this large scale data? And this value, it's really um, computationally efficient. What was we need to see, right? We need to um, we need to answer that. And to answer that, uh, we focus on the sulfur cycle. So I hear so the talks. Nobody cares about the sulfur cycle, even in the literature. So, but my chemical cycles are really complex and. So the boring um, answer is, okay, it's the, one of the most, or the most complex biochemical cycle. Um, but the truth is that I studied, so it's the second chapter of my PhD thesis. 
So this, the second chapter is that I want to understand the change of microbial communities uh, in face of uh, environmental perturbations. So I wanted to understand how the metabolic capabilities change over time. And um, I wanted to understand this, the, the, um, the differences in the biochemical cycle, especially in sulfur, because I was studying extreme environments and things like that. So I wanted to understand, really understand the sulfur cycle. And I went, when I came into the PhD and I saw and I searched the literature, they were uh, looking at specific genes. And I was like, no, this is not really capturing an entire and complex biochemical cycle only using these specific genes. So that's the, the, the so I'm being honest with you. So that's that's why I studied the, the sulfur cycle, and this is like the representation of what is a so, um, a biochemical cycle for those that you might have an idea. But life on Earth is based on these elements, right? So carbon, hydrogen, and the fluxes of these elements through uh, the air, through biosphere, it's a biochemical cycle, and it's this elements comes from the atmosphere by uh, photochemical processes and chemical geological processes. So it's very, very complex to, to, to understand. So, okay, our case of the study it was going to be a um, sulfur cycle. And the next question is, okay, what is the data that we have to analyze this? Okay, let's go to the, to the databases. So I went to the, to the databases and uh huh. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So I was not convinced. So I used keg and I just made a and I was like, no, keg is telling me this only. It's focused on a few pathways, and meta is using these pathways. So I decided to understand, to really understand. I compared both databases and I manually reconstruct the sulfur cycle and this is my representation. So I use like literature to fill all the gaps and here we observe like the first reconstruction of this metabolic machinery and this is the organic part of the cycle and if you go to the literature and you look for a um, specific by uh, biochemical cycle, they only use like redox reactions and inorganic compounds, not organic compounds. So I uh, reconstruct all this in order to see, okay, we can, so the question is, we can capture all this with just one single value? And the answer, oh, okay, so, <coughs> how, how I integrate all this, um, all this information. So first, I want to understand what are the um, um, microorganisms involved. So I searched again in the literature, and I went there and I say, okay, these are the 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 genera involved, and <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. So if you can just help me, please. <laughs> Get inside it. So, um, yeah. And then I uh, generate uh, this uh, database, this database, which is called SULI, because it's social list. And the thing is that, okay, we have all this general. The answer was, okay, from all this genera, only 161 are complete genomes. So, and our list, for uh, Sully, was only the, the NCBI identifier with the name of the genome, right? And then the metabolic machinery, so to reconstruct all the, the metabolic machinery that I just showed you, next, was next, built in three or four, um, so, First, I search the sulfur compounds, then I reconstruct all the metabolic pathways, and then I search all the genes, and then the proteins. So, 
these are the inputs for the algorithm. Just one list of genomes, complete sequence genomes, <coughs> and one FASTA file containing all the proteins involved. I'm, I'm not talk about, I, I, I'm just not going to talk about how I build this sulfur cycle because nobody cares. <laughs> they, because it's really complex and if you want to talk about it I will be happy because um, yes, I just get excited about it. <laughs> and these are basically all the sulfur compounds, organic and inorganic. So, um, and they are arranged according to thermodynamics. So this is just like a schematic representation of the sulfur cycle in a large scale. So here I divided, so, okay, I wanted to understand one sulfur, one, one biochemical cycle, one really complex, and then I decided to do it systematically. I just, it, it was impossible to do it like randomly, so I wanted to do it like step by step, each sulfur compound, it was, was uh, used as a source of energy, carbon, nitrogen, energy, energy, unit source, electron donor, or used as a substrate for fermentation, terminal electron acceptor and respiratory process, and so on. So, <laughs> then I decided to divide all the metabolic pathways involved, and then we get to next, to this, right? So after I did all this, I just search all the, all the proteins involved. And next. So we have metabolic databases, manually created databases, but what about the public data that we have? All the complete sequence genomes that we have available. So the thing is, that in RedSet, we have public available and manually created data. So the number, the, the, the question was, we want to understand this in a large scale, right? And how many genomes were available at the time of analysis, which was last year. Uh, so there were around 4,000 RedSec complete sequence and well annotated genomes. But the non-redundant data set was like half of that. So we used the non-redundant data set to, to say, okay, if I, if I want to use this score, I'm going to analyze a well in a, in a good data set containing all this information. So we built this, which contained this 2,000 non-redundant genomes. Next one. And we also wanted to understand, oh, I'm sorry, it was me. The, the, the sulfur cycle in a, in a metagenomic scale, right? So, we decided to use this server, but, okay, there are a lot of, of metagenomes available, but we want to understand ecological traits. So, we wanted to, uh, so the conditions were, okay, you have this metagenome, but it's not available, and we also wanted also the metagenomes with metadata and not all the metagenomes in this data set contain metadata and that's like from being from 2,000 or more metagenomes to only use 900 metagenomes and we also added 35 metagenomes that we uh, sequenced. So that's like about 1,000 metagenomes and 2,000 genomes. And we want to simulate a genomic, a metagenomic um, data, so we in silico fragmented the, the genomic data set. Okay, so, mm, yeah, next, yeah. So we have this, this is the first step of the algorithm. So we first have, you, you, what you need is um, a list containing the genomes that you know that are involved in the metabolic in the pathway that you want or metabolism that you want. Then you need to have all the proteins involved, and then a data set to evaluate and, and to train this classifier. 
So what we did is using the domain composition of these genomes, next, we used the, each domain to build the mathematical model. So the domains enrich among the, the organism, organisms of interest among these will be uh, very informative. So only the PFAN domains enriched in these genomes will be uh, very informative. And the other one will, uh, will be not uh, informative as well. So the question is, can we capture with this score the metabolic machinery? We, um, the, the pipeline is uh, in GitHub if you want to know more details. And but basically the algorithm is that you give one FASTA file, either a genome or metagenome, and using this information, you can just uh, have your final score. And we tested with 2,000 uh, genomes and next, nine, uh, 955. So I'm just going to <coughs> be very fast. And this is the distribution of the score in our genomic data set. So basically, I'm just not going to explain uh, all the, the graphs. Uh, if you want to go to my poster, it's top, uh, poster number 12. Uh, but the thing is, if you have a genome or a metagenome and it has a high uh, score, that means that you are capturing all the metabolic machinery of interest. So we are, uh, we are focused on the highest scores. So high uh, scores means that they will be implicated in the sulfur cycle. So to prove that, we decided to, to, to focus on the highest ones. And then we realized, OK, this, this distribution is obviously different from the rest. So what are they doing, these genomes? This distribution is the, the input list. So we know that they are involved, but what about this? So we search in the literature of 192 papers. And we realized that all of them <coughs> were involved in the sulfur cycle. So with this, you can just have no idea of a genome. And you can say, OK, I am captured. This might be possibly involved in. And actually, what was really interesting to capture genomes obtained from metagenomic reconstruction with a, high, a really high score. Next. And we uh, use a rock curve. I'm not going to talk about the details of that. But basically, if you uh, have a rock curve, uh, that means how accurate are you being classifying these organisms or uh, metagenomes. So if you have an uh, area under the curve of 1, that means that everything that you classify is true. So we have uh, area under the curve of 0.98. So that means that if you have a high, higher score in one genome or one metagenome, that would be very, very accurate. And if you have a sulfur score, that's what we call it, of uh, 8.7, that means that it's implicated in the sulfur cycle. That, that was the, the, genomic, the genomic data set. But what about environment? So we want to understand this in an uh, environmental scale. So next one. Uh, and this is the metagenomes that we use with, uh, in, in, in the map. So as you can see, they are uh, highlighted uh, in the most informative. So the higher the scores are in, in blue. So we can have geolocalized uh, metagenomes around the world. And we can say we put just one single picture Oh, OK, I know that this, and this, and this, and this, and this are involved in the sulfur cycle because they were either thermal vents or whatever. And then we want to understand the same thing, but with ecological traits. So we use metadata, and we uh, sort all these environments according to uh, the features. And we have here the most important uh, environments. 
and we manually create it and we search and we say, okay, all these metagenomes are actually involved in the sulfur cycle. So next, 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 next all the or conclusions. So this is my idea of what the, the, the score is. So this is a, a open source software to evaluate, quantify, and predict metabolic machineries in large omic data sets with one single value. So this is like a, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about it in the next one. I just need to finish this. Yeah, so I had this idea if you have this, um, the minion, so you have the minion here, and you uh, go to the environment, sample, sequence, and then you put the algorithm, and then automatically it will say, and if you have more databases, not only the, the sulfur cycle, so let's imagine that we integrate more databases, that, that's what I'm working on, uh, for example, other biochemical cycles, so for example, all the pathways involved in bioremediation, antibiotics, extreme environments, agriculture, whatever, like the specific uh, and complex metabolisms. And you can just say, okay, this sample, like, like in the future, I don't know, um, this, uh, this sample is informative and this and this and this and this, with one single value, like, that's what I see. And uh, so we are, uh, we already finished the, the, the test for the other cycles and they are really accurate, like the sulfur. And we hope that this pipeline facilitate the analysis uh, of complex metabolic machineries. And we look forward to collaborate and help. Um, and we are also considering taking k instead of hidden market models to increase the speed of the pipeline. Um, and yeah, we uh, anticipate that our platform will stimulate the interest and the involvement among the research scientific community. And also one thing that it, you can explore on culture derived genomes from, I mean, exploring microbial that matter. And, and thank you for, for your attention. That's it.